A crime has been committed and it's up to you to solve it. The mask for this camp is missing. It's urgent that we need to find it. You're gonna be doing the testing on this evidence. Careful, careful, careful. We need to preserve the evidence. It's crunch time and we don't even know if we can find the mask. Sorry, girls. Major funding for Sci Girls is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Additional funding provided by L'Oreal USA for girls in science. You can learn more at forgirlsinscience.org and by PPG Industries Foundation, committed to bringing positive impact to our communities. There's a place I go for inspiration. Gotta get to the web, check the girls' investigation. What the? Girls mystery about a mask that's been stolen. Did you say mask? I hate masks. Evil lurks behind masks. Ask any raccoon you meet. Masks are scary. Okay. Well, I hope so. I love scary movies, don't you? Uh, yeah, sure. Who doesn't love? Ah! Turn on the lights! For the love of cheesy boobs, turn on the lights! <laughs> I was just turning out the light so we could see better. Oh, wait a sec. Jake, you're really totally scared of masks? A little bit. Just a little tiny bit deathly afraid of masks and scary movies. And scary mask movies? Forget about it. Boo! Ah! Oh, this is gonna be fun. There's like nothing but trees out here though. I know, we're so far out. Emmy, Kaylin, and I are on our way to a forensics camp. My name is Christina, and the thing I love about science is that it's found everywhere around us. What's in the envelope, guys? Let's open it. Let's check it out. Have a letter. Okay, we have a letter. Dear Sci Girls, welcome to your experience at Camp Raven, a forensic camp. A crime has been committed at camp, and it's up to you to solve it. The letter said that we are going to help solve a crime that has been committed. We'll be able to meet with some specialists in the field and solve it. My name's Emmy, and my favorite thing about forensic science is the whole mystery of it. Emmy, where are we going right now? We're going to go to Camp Raven. Woo! We are going to solve a crime. Really? Crime fighters. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I'm pumped. This is going to be fun. Are you ready to get your detective on? My name is Kaylin, and what I love about forensic science is that looking at the small things, you can figure out who committed the crime and what happened at the crime scene. We're going to solve this. So. Lay down the law. We will be given more details upon our arrival, so I'm just really excited to hear more about it, because right now we're kind of left out in the dark. Find out soon. We'll be detectives. Woo! Watch for the arrows. They're clues for the Pick'em Stick'em game on the website. When I pulled up to the cabin, there was crime scene tape around the perimeter of the cabin. I'm actually nervous and anxious to find out what happened with the crime, and I'm really hoping that everybody's okay and that nobody got hurt. Hi. Welcome. 
Hi there, I'm Lindsay. I'm Emmy. Lindsay Garfield is a lead crime scene investigator and she's gonna be helping us figure out this crime. We're gonna go into the cabin, we're gonna process the scene, we're gonna go through how to collect evidence, document, photograph, sketch, and we're gonna do that after we have our briefing. When we start with the briefing, we start to learn about what happened here and what we're gonna do to help solve the crime. The briefing information is this. The mask for this camp is missing. This information's coming to me from the camp director, Maxine. It was last seen by the groundskeeper, Jeb, at 10 o'clock last night, and the arts and crafts director opened the cabin back up at seven this morning, and it's gone. The case is open, the mask is missing. The mask is called the Queen of the Forest Mask, created by Cornelia Raven. She's a famous artist, and she built the mask in 1940. And I have a picture of it. It's kind of white with silver, it's got some glitter on it. Mm -hmm. It has some diamonds and gemstones on it. Oh, that's they use this mask every year at their masquerade ball. The master of ceremonies at this masquerade ball wears this mask, so this ball can't happen until the mask is found. The mask that was stolen was actually really important. They use it every year for this masquerade ball, and it happens in the next few days. So if we don't find it, it's going to be breaking tradition, so it's urgent that we need to find it. So I'm gonna show you some photos that the camp director gave to me today. This is a photo of all of the people that were on site during the time in question. These are all of our suspects. We have 10 suspects, and those suspects are the camp staff, which include the cook, the camp director, some counselors, the groundskeeper, and the heir to the camp, Ray. Anybody has the chance to come into this yeah. cabin, so we need to do what we can to find the evidence to recover the mask. When we first got up to the door, the first thing Lindsay did was check the door to see if there's forced entry. There's no chipped paint on the door. There's no marks on the door. Because there's no forced entry, we're not gonna fingerprint this door. When we saw that there was no sign of a break-in, we assumed immediately that um, the person that committed this crime most likely had a key to the cabin. All right, let's go in and we'll start to do the walkthrough and process the scene, okay? All right. Okay. The mood in the room when we first walked in was serious. It was just really exciting to be doing something so different from anything we've ever experienced. This is the scene of the crime. Look at, there's a paint on the floor and the footprints. Too. And there's glitter over here. The reason that we're looking at this cabin for evidence is due to a scientific principle called Locard's exchange principle. And it simply means that when two things come in contact with each other, they transfer a part of each other onto the other. Whenever you touch something, you always leave a trace behind, and that thing leaves a trace on you. We're gonna walk around the room, take a very careful look. Where there's a certain path that we have to take as we walk around the room, so we don't mess any of the evidence up. We've got spilled paint you guys noticed before. There's also shoe prints so here. They must have knocked it over as they were like currying out the It looks room. that way. And there's it also a notebook that has a page ripped out. Yes, the page is ripped out of the notebook. It's important to note how things are in the original state you okay. find them in. So now we have two things missing from the cabin, the note and the mask. Lindsay shows us to collect anything that might be relevant in the crime. She said that anything that might have been disturbed or like shouldn't normally be there is something we should collect. This is the case where the mask was kept. You're going to want to note the door being open almost all the way. It looks like there's more glitter inside. We did a walkthrough. Christina's job was taking pictures of everything she saw and processing the crime. My job was taking notes of everything I found. Emmy's job was to take measurements of the crime scene and make sure that we could make a floor plan. After documenting the evidence that we saw, we started collecting and numbering the evidence that we found. The glitter on the floor in front of the door is item number one. We put up cards to note where all the evidence was. Then we took pictures of each piece of evidence with its card. Collecting glitter because it's small, best thing to pick it up with. Lindsay showed us different ways to collect evidence. Like a really unique and cool way that she taught us was to collect glitter from the floor by using a sticky note and sticking it actually on the glitter and then folding it over itself and then packaging up the evidence. I'm gonna have you guys place the rest of the tents and we'll collect that evidence together. 
Number two is the notebook paper. Number three be the smaller footprints. We collected the notebook on the desk. We actually cut out the footprints in the paint on the paper on the floor. And we also collected three samples of glitter. There was some on the floor. There was some in the front of the mask case on the table and actually some inside the mask case. When we put our evidence into the paper bags, we had to make sure that they were completely sealed so nobody could tamper with them. This is the debriefing, okay? This is something you do after every crime scene. And we just kind of went over what we had seen and talked about what we we're gonna do next. You're gonna be doing some of the testing on this evidence. All right, All right. Sounds, sounds good. good. Sounds All right, good. let's go. Today we're going to my house and we're making an evidence board to have a visual on the suspects. And so we need our camp director, Maxine. The staff list is now narrowed down to five instead of 10. Since the door was left intact, the perpetrator obviously used a key, and we're going to mainly focus on those suspects. Jeb, you will go right here. Our suspects that we've limited down to now are Jeb, our groundskeeper, Ray, who is the great-grandson of Miss Cornelia, Luna, the arts and craft director, Maxine, the camp director, and Blanche, the aquatics director, Number five, the footprint on the floor. On the left side of the board, we have the five suspects, and then on top of the board, we have the evidence that we collected at the scene. Lindsay dropped off a huge box of evidence, and inside the box was shoes from suspects, handwriting samples, and interviews from every one of them saying where they had been that night. Okay, let's watch this, guys. Where was I the night the mask was taken? Well, I had invited some other camp directors from camps in the adjoining area. We sat around the campfire, and uh, we were there until the fire died out. Well, what did they do after the fire died out, though? They were probably there late because they're adults, so they can stay out pretty late. Well, I was in the dining hall playing a late night game of chess with a camp cook. I spent all day outside in the sun in my canoe and got a really bad case of heat exhaustion and went to bed early around 8 p.m. I dropped by for a dinner meeting with a camp director. I was off site by 7 p.m. I had a polo tournament to attend at a colleague's estate. I was down at the dock stargazing with the other counselors and then it got cloudy around 1 a.m. and we called it a night. What did you guys wow. notice that was like fishy or like sketchy? We really can't exclude or like throw anyone out yet because there's a huge time frame there from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and any of these people could still have committed the crime. After watching the alibi videos, we looked at the handwriting sample we found at the crime scene and we compared it to the handwriting samples from the five staff members who had keys. These three handwritings seem the most similar to our notebook. What I can conclude from the test is that Blanche's, Maxine's, and Luna's handwriting all look similar, but we can't rule out the writer of the note could have been writing in a different style of handwriting than its actual handwriting. The next thing we did after handwriting was start analyzing the shoe prints and shoes. Did you guys notice that there's little owls, it looks like, in the shoe prints? I did not. I did oh, not yeah. see that. So maybe That's a really should, good example. Maybe we should use both because you can yeah. see the owl prints better here. So should we yeah. start with the girl shoes? Yeah, sure. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my God. God. The owls, guys. The owls. The owl prints. Oh. We were really excited when the owl prints on Luna's shoes looked very similar to the owls in the shoe prints. The next shoe we evaluated was Maxine's. Dude, They're the they same have the same shoes. sandals, guys. Oh my gosh. And this one has silver, silver glitter. glitter. Careful, careful, careful. We need to preserve the evidence. We were shocked at the discovery that she had the same sandals, and then we actually found silver glitter on Maxine's shoes. Same shoes same again. Same shoes again. again. The next shoe that we looked at was Lanche's, and her shoes were also the same exact shoes as Maxine's and Luna's. Let's open up Ray's shoes. Whoa, one. these are huge. These are huge. Shoes. Do you think this matches up with the footprints? I, to me, don't I don't think, think this would work. Match. Gosh, and there's no, no owls. owls. OK, I guess we just have Jeff's Jeff. left. Hey guys, let's Owl be prints on the bottom, guys? <laughs> no. no. OK, well, I think that we can eliminate this. So these are all going to the lab. After we did the shoe and handwriting analysis, we went to the evidence board and we started linking the suspects to the evidence that we found at the crime scene.
The suspects that had the most check marks in their row would be Maxine, Blanche, and Luna because they all had similar handwriting to the handwriting on the notebook, and they also had the tread that was in the paint on the bottom of their shoes. We can't rule anyone out right now, but we do have our suspicions on who the perpetrator is. So I think we can really fill this out once we get back from the lab with the results. We're at Hamlin University, and we are going to go into the lab and meet Sarah. Hi. Hey, Sarah. Hi, girls. Hey, Sarah. Wow, it looks like you brought a lot of evidence to yeah, examine. Yeah, we got it all. Sarah is a forensic scientist who analyzes trace evidence. Do you girls want to get on lab coats so we can start doing some science? Definitely. Yeah. Great. All right. In the lab today, we're going to be analyzing ink, glitter, and shoe prints. We found some silver glitter in the mask case. So that would be our known glitter. So the known would be like the glitter in the case. We know that's from the mask. The question would be the glitter from Maxine's shoe. We are looking at the glitter sample from Maxine's shoe. When we looked at the glitter under the scopes, we looked at things like shape and color. I never thought that glitter had that much detail. It was really unique and cool to find out that, oh, glitter isn't just glitter. It actually has a lot of different characteristics to it. It looks like the shape of a hexagon, guys. The edges of the glitter looks like they're raised. As we were looking at the glitter, we noticed more things about it, like how they had ridges and indents in it and how there seemed to be different layers there and also how it wasn't completely smooth over the layer of glitter. It looked like there was pores in the glitter. Let's put the question sample away and let's get the known sample out and let's see if we can make these same observations. Cool. Awesome. This one looks very similar to the glitter piece from Maxine's shoe. It also has that bent up Shape to it. Shape to it. It also does have the same six sides. Yes. The two glitter samples that we analyzed had a lot of similarities. So based on your observations, what are you girls thinking about the glitter from Maxine's shoe and this known glitter from the mask? I think they're very similar. Mm -hmm. They even have some of the manufacturing defects in common with each other. So do you think that the glitter from Maxine's shoe could have come from the mask? Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Based on the fact that the glitter from Maxine's shoes had a lot of characteristics that the glitter from the mask case had, we determined that Maxine was in that room and she could possibly have stolen the mask. Our next testing was going to be on the pens. Sarah ran tests on the ink that we found from the notebook at the scene of the crime, and our job was to actually run the same test and see if there was any similarities there. What we want to do is just look at the chromatography results from the three pens and we'll compare it to the note. Okay. The pens that we tested were pens from Blanche, Maxine, and Luna. The reason that we tested these pens only is because their handwriting was the most similar that we found on the notebook. One dot for each pen, three dots total. We used a wick and the pens that we collected from the suspects, we did small dots of each sample of the pen and then we actually put the wick with the pen ink in water and we watched the colors separate and we compared it to the same test that Sarah had done with the ink from the crime scene. On both Luna's and uh, the note, they start off like a bluish purple color, and then it ends yellow. It looked like Luna's pen wrote the note. It doesn't mean that two people didn't switch pens. Yeah. After we conducted this test, we were able to conclude that the ink from Luna's pen actually wrote the note. Can you imagine Luna taking the mask? So Luna walks into the cabin. She goes straight to the notebook and starts writing down the information she needs to maybe sell the mask. Not scary at all. Not scared of masks. Not scared. Ah! There's a hand in my popcorn! For the love of cheesy poofs, there's a hand! It's yours. The hand is yours. <laughs> Nothing to be scared of here. Really? Because it is my hand, <gasps> but I can't control it. It's a zombie hand. It has a mind of its own. And it must have popcorn! Ah! <laughs> You're so easy. She was the one to realize it was gone, so that's a good cover. 
When we started working with shoe prints, we started with each individual shoe print and we coated it with an ink and then pressed down to make an impression and then copied them onto a transparency sheet so we could actually lay them over the prints that we collected from the scene and really analyze them. So let's try with this impression, Maxine's shoe. It doesn't look like this one corresponds. It looks like this one's moved over a little bit more. But what I'm seeing in this question impression is a little bit of smearing. Smudge. That could maybe make the shoe move a little bit. Left when they're walking. So let's overlay again. Could that maybe account for that slight difference that you're seeing in placement? Definitely. Because if it went this way, then everything would align. This one lines up pretty well. Yeah, this one lines up better. Especially because of the smudges. Mm -hmm. Because the paper was clear, you really could analyze the differences and similarities. I don't think that Blanche's is a correct fit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we could eliminate Blanche's? Okay. Yeah. This is Luna's shoe. This one doesn't quite line up. I don't think Luna. I think Maxine's was the better. It's just one more piece of evidence. It's so. against Maxine over Yeah, there. okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't know at this point if we can really say Maxine took the mask. No, yeah, we can't say so that yet. We concluded that Maxine's shoe prints were the closest that were actually found at the crime scene. I could almost kind of see Maxine doing it sneaking into the cabin, writing the letter. She probably was in a rush, so as she rips out the paper, the green paint spills. And stealing the mask and leaving. She might be a little upset because the heir to the camp itself is Ray and not her, and she's probably the one who does most of the things. She's the one in charge. Heir just good. walks around and he looks good. That's all he does while she's doing all the work. Our final suspects at the end of the day were actually Luna and Maxine. You've put a lot of the pieces of the puzzle together, but we're still not sure who committed this crime. So there's one last piece of evidence, the torn note. You can never tear a piece of paper the same way twice. So if you can find the individual that has this torn piece of paper and physically match it back, you'll have your suspect. If we do find that notebook paper, I think that's going to be the prime evidence that will lead us to the perpetrator. Today is actually the day of the masquerade ball. It's really crunch time, and we're nervous. Girls are arriving all dressed up, decorations are going up, everyone's getting ready for this ball, and we don't even know if we can find the mask. Our first order of business is to find the missing part of the paper from the notebook that we found at the crime scene. The camp gave us permission to search the offices of Maxine and Luna. This is Maxine's office, huh? Mm-hmm. Do you guys see anything suspicious? We walk into Maxine's office, and one of the first things we notice is a list of things to do. <gasps> what did you guys see? I thought I saw a piece of paper, a notebook paper. Hold on, let's look through carefully. Again. Christina went and flipped through the pages, and then she noticed some writing in a different color page, because it was basically just all graph paper in that stack of paper. <gasps> Here, oh my gosh, it's there. Oh my gosh, it's there. Oh my gosh. Now let's get the notebook okay. to compare it, guys. I wish I oh my gosh, more. this is crazy. It's here. OK. Okay, hey, look, out. look, this is exactly the exact same. Up. And then it says August, it leaves off at July. The dates. And then the, the lines match up. And, and it, the holes match up over here. Match up. That's crazy, guys. Oh my gosh. After that, we found a piece of paper in Maxine's laptop. Play, Play this, this video. video. Let's watch, guys. Congratulations, you found me out. This is camp director Maxine, and yes, I did take the Crazy. queen of the forest back. To it. And you'll find it in its box in my office, so go ahead, get the mask, go to the party, and have a great time. It's in the box, it's in, the box. in her office. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. I can't believe Look at that. You found it. Up to this point, all we had seen was a picture of the mask. But opening up that box and seeing the mask, it was a moment of pure bliss. One, two, three, Psy Girls! Maxine committed the crime, and it feels great to know who committed the crime. Since Luna does work in the craft room, she could have left her pen there. When Maxine was in there, she was hurrying. She picked up the first pen she saw and started, and started writing, writing the note. The note. That so makes that a, lot make a lot of sense. too. Just kind of gave us a sense of accomplishment and just really brought this whole experience together. The ball's starting soon, guys. Let's get this mask to the ball. As soon 
as we walked in the door, everyone smiled and started cheering. They were so happy to get the mask back and carry on with the tradition. It just made this whole experience complete. Behold the queen of the forest! <laughs> Working with two of my great friends has been a great experience. It's one of my favorite things to do, hang out with them, and then forensics, it's just like a great match together. I'm so proud that we found the mask and that the tradition of Camp Raven can go on. From this experience, I've gotten to learn a whole lot more about the forensic science field, and it was super great getting to work with Kaylin and Christina, and I think it really brought us even closer together. Got your clues? Head on over to the web and play pick 'em stick 'em at pbskidsgo.org. I knew it was Maxine the whole time. See, told you there was nothing to be scared of. Me scared? What are you? It's okay, Iz. I knew you'd be scared, so I pretended to be scared. Ah! ah it's a zombie rodent! Don't eat me! Don't eat me, please! It's Fang. I can see that now. I'm gonna put you down now. Not yet. Hey, I'm Emmy. This is Kayla. And I'm Christina. I kind of just sail for fun. Family baseball game. Kids versus adults. And this is me fishing with my family on the Mississippi River. Another thing I like to do is play soccer. <gasps> Making my grandma's famous caramel rolls. Caramel rolls! Yes! Caramel rolls. This is the fish I just got. <laughs> Toodles, poodles. The oysters in the Chesapeake Bay are dying off. We wanted to go out and see if your stored reefs are actually working. Wow, we get to build an underwater robot. Yeah, modified and then we get tested. Oh, it's a blue crab! Whoa. Ice and snow it makes it sort of dangerous. I think there's a way that we could improve non-slip footwear. It talks about biomimicry, so it's life copying. To help with traction. Prototype debut party. Back in my awesomeness! Major funding for SciGirls is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Additional funding provided by L'Oreal USA for girls in science. You can learn more at forgirlsinscience.org and by PPG Industries Foundation, committed to bringing positive impact to our communities. Hey there, hi. The SciGirls website is off the hook. You can set up a profile, play games, create a page for your science project, watch SciGirls videos, and have fun. So come on, be a Psy Girl on pbskidsgo.org. See you there. Bye.